Welcome to the Inner Princess course guide to Arizona Modern Hard Part 2. Following on from the last video, we're going to look here at the back nine holes 10 to 18. In my opinion, this is one of the best designed courses in the game to play, and the back nine includes some particularly feared and revered holes. As ever, I'll explore the various routes available to you and advise on what I think works consistently or is worth the risk. Starting with hole 10, we have a hole of two routes, and so we need to look at the risk versus reward for each. Both options curve out from the tee and back in towards a circular green. The clear route to the right has no perimeter, and therefore no direct route to the green or even a clear line on putt 2. The best you can do here is lay up, getting as close to the edges as you feel comfortable. From here you'll need to play a second shot just to get a line, and because a rebound towards the hole risks going out of bounds, you may as well just accept the birdie 3 and move on. The second route to the left has a perimeter wall offering a little more safety, but the path through is cluttered with rocks. By using the wall immediately to the left of the tee, you can gain a clear line through, and there's tolerance for at least staying in bounds if you miss it. Getting through in one gives you a shot at the eagle, while getting caught up in the rocks should still grant you a birdie, so this is the best route to go if you've practiced the angles needed. This same route also offers the potential for the hole in one, though you'd need to play at a pace which risks the out of bounds, so maybe not one for the tournaments, but it's definitely fun to hit. Hole 11 doesn't require much strategy or consideration. The hole is played over two banked rings, and the upper of the two gains access to the lower at the crossover point. Once onto the lower ring, your ball will be delivered close to the hole, so the only shot to make here is the first. Ideally, you'll want to play at a weight to just drop into the access gap, but you've got a reasonable amount of relief if you overhit, as you should roll back or roll on to find one of the two cutouts. Aim for just beyond your target weight and don't underhit. Then you play the waiting game until your ball rests up next to the cup. Don't be put off by the slight slope the cup is on, aim straight for the centre and drive your putt home. At a very generous par 4, you've only really got to make the first shot to all but guarantee the eagle here. Down the steps sits the par 5 hole 12. The wide circular mat houses an upper tier spectacle shaped green, and the only way up is via a ramp on the opposite side from the tee area. There are two ways to access this ramp, so let's have a look at the shots and scores for each. The bridge over the nose joint of the spectacles provides a tunnel through for your ball to reach the base of the ramp. Play it at a dead weight to hit the wall, and you have about 4 inches of over and under hit relief in order to still have a play at the ramp. From here, you'll have to judge your power carefully in order to access what is a pretty narrow line to the hole across the bridge. Misjudging this will simply leave you with a 2 putt for birdie, but getting the line gives you a shot at the eagle. If you get the eagle shot, focus only on the cup and don't let the boundary edges distract you. The second route involves rolling around the outer edge of the lower circle. This delivers your ball to and up the ramp to the green. In order to do this, you'll need to play off the wall immediately to your right at the tee and give it a good hit. It's a narrow margin for error here, so this is an angle which needs practice. With all the bounces adding variability to your weight, it's unlikely you'll have a clear line for the albatross, but a two putt for eagle is much more hopeful. With the potential for the eagle slightly stronger on this route, I'd recommend it as the percentage option, but only with a good amount of practice first. Hole 13 joins Hole 8 in the senior rank of Round Killer for Arizona Modern Hard. This four-tiered cascade offers no simple route to the hole, as the two domed stones in the middle tiers punish any variance from a straight line. Playing at a weight to avoid them can provide a clean hop down, but will most likely send your ball onwards to join the great lost ball collection in the sky. You may get lucky, or judge it very well to hit the back wall and stay on the green, and you may even come back off the raiding bars, but this is not a certainty. If you do get lucky, you have an opportunity to sink the eagle putt, but only if you hit the green on your first try. Having explored every route I've seen attempted, I can say I've seen no discernibly safer route, or a route which reliably gets you to the green even in two. The route I opt for involves playing a light weight off your teeing ledge to drop just short of the first dome, from here, you're able to chip the ball up, so laying up straight will come in handy. Chipping up from here means you set your ball on a bounce path which avoids the second dome, hops over the tier walls, and stays low enough to sit once on the green. Get this shot well practiced, and you've got a good chance of walking away with a birdie. 
make a mistake and you'll just need to take the long path down in an exercise of damage limitation. If your confidence wasn't already shot from hole 13, hole 14 asks a big question of your bravery. There are no tiers or banks to this hole, just a flat perimeterless mat shaped like a rainbow over to the green on your right. The only rebound point offered is a lonely single brick which sits at the top of the curve. If you're not feeling confident to hit it at pace, lay up. Play close to the inside edge and use a dead weight to the brick. This still won't leave you a direct route to the hole, but using the outer curved edge of the green can safely deliver your ball to within comfortable range for par, and believe me, par is a decent enough result on this hole. In order to better this score, you'd need to hit the brick at pace, which increases your margin for error. Fun fact, many players aren't aware that this game has a driving range. It does indeed, and it's called hole 14. Set your posture, relax your hips, aim for the brick and drive your ball 200 yards into the desert. Anyway, get this right and providing you've given your shot enough weight, your ball should be delivered safely to the green. From here, your putt for birdie is safe and you'll have bragging rights for the next 30 seconds. After back to back challenging holes, Hole 15 provides what I consider to be one of the most enjoyable types of hole design seen on occasion in this game. That is, the type of hole where the hole in one is so achievable that during rounds players will line up to watch the balls head towards the cup, cheering them on and hoping the best for each other. This really helps to lift the spirit of the round, even in competition. Once you send your ball up the banking, it will hopefully drop into one of three circles. The outer two housing troughs and the centre providing the cup sat on top of a banked podium. You've got a good chance at hitting the eagle hole in one if you play to rest your ball on the stone before the drop, with enough momentum to catch a glance off the far wall on the roll down. A near miss should still leave you with an uphill putt for two, which you should be careful not to overthink. If you do find yourself in one of the troughs, you can still hole out by having a second go back up the ramp to the same drop tunnel. You'll need to give it a confident push to allow for the bouncing as you join the ramp but get it right and you're still out in two or three, which isn't bad for a recovery shot. Hole 16 continues the flow of uplifting hole-in-one hopefuls as you head down a half pipe resembling an S-shape as a result of two tricky cutouts. Providing you avoid these and catch the right bounce, you've got a reasonable chance of getting close enough to the hole that you and your opponents will be watching for it to drop. Swerving your way around the cutouts may seem like the obvious choice and is playable, Make sure you hit high up the side of the ramp to prevent your ball from bouncing downwards and you'll be safely delivered to the green. There is an easier and more reliable route which deflects your ball holewards, and this involves clearing the first cutout altogether and catching the left edge of the ramp to steer your ball back towards the green. Again, you'll want to hit high up the edge to keep the ball bounce under control, and you'll either sink it in one or have a birdie shot for two. Now, if your name is for real for real, and you are a trick shot legend of the game, you'll of course not be satisfied with everyone else's hole in one route. In which case, turn 180 degrees to chip your ball up off the back stone edge and back towards the ramp. You'll gain absolutely nothing from this but street cred. The penultimate hole looks like an unfinished scale electric track. Your path to the circular green is under a tunnel, round a 270 degree loop and over the crossover bridge. This is identical to the easy course version, except for the hole placement. This time the cup is in the centre of the down ramp, and so makes your starting line crucial. If you play safely along the outer edge, and don't under hit, you'll send your ball over to the green and reasonably straight. Don't overthink the putt for birdie too, as you'll be safe enough going straight at the hole. If you are going to miss, miss inside, so you have a chance of looping back down and in. To go for the eagle hole in one, you need to avoid pinning to the outer edge. Aim at least straight, preferably left of straight, and give it a medium firm hit. This will cause your ball to depart from the bridge wall at just the right moment and send you holewards. Not an easy hole in one to hit, but this could be your third consecutive hole in one. The final hole of the round is a challenging par four, and you should be content enough to leave this hole with a par. The long straight of the green is broken up with two stone barriers creating a slalom path to the cup. There's no direct route here and this is one of the few holes in the game I'll assign the bold statement of saying the hole in one is not possible. Your best tee shot is to roll up to the left edge of the first block giving you as much angle to work with on your second approach. Judge this right and you have to execute another tight line shot 
fractionally clearing the outer edge of the second block to leave a birdie putt for three. This is a shot Willow pulled off to win the most recent VR Golf League tournament and take some impressive sized golf balls to go for under such pressure. A birdie here can only be achieved with three consecutive skilled shots, so be sure to hit your no-look walkaway putt if you've got a line and you're feeling confident. That concludes the course and should hopefully sit you at between 8 to 15 under par with some skill, some planning and of course some good fortune. The intricacies of this course make it one of the best on the game and on the whole rewards good technique and good planning. Thank you again for watching, I hope you found this guide helpful. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for future content and drop me a comment if you've got anything to ask or add. As ever, please do join the Discord using the link in the description or the Facebook group if you prefer that platform. I look forward to seeing you out on the course. Make sure to say hello if you're in a round with me. I'm always happy to hear new ideas and strategies. As requested by Stefan, I'll be working on Tourist Trap Hard next. So if you've got any requests, let me know in the comments section.